please. The final manifestation of supernatural realities happens through the ministry of men. The final arrival or manifestation of spiritual realities happen through the ministry of men. I'm showing you the conversion systems in the spirit, how it leaves the realm of the spirit and finally arrives at your life. The final arrival or manifestation of supernatural realities, it happens through the ministry of men. John 5, 7. Why are you in this condition, Jesus said? And he said, I have no man that when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. First Samuel chapter 10, 3 and 4. Prophet Samuel blesses Saul and says, Then thou shalt go forward from tents, and thou shalt come to the plain of Tabor, and there thou shalt meet three men. Who will you meet? As proof that prophecy has come upon your life, you will meet men, three men, going up to God to Bethel, one carrying three goats or kids, and another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine, verse 4. As a result, the men will salute you and give thee two loaves of bread, and when they give you, see it as God answering you, thou shalt receive it from where? How do you receive what God gives you? From the hands of men. How do you receive what God gives you? From the hands of men. One more time. How do you receive what God gives you? From the hands of men. Keep that scripture there. I'll read it one more time. They will salute you because God has gone ahead of you. They will give you two loaves. I prophesied increase, I prophesied restoration, I prophesied favor. This is what he's saying. But as proof, you will not get it from me. I'm representing God. But go. As you go, keep watching out for men. Watch out for men. Every time you see men, remember what God told you. He said, because of what God told you, men will give you, receive it from their hands. Where is your job? The hands of men. Your promotion the hands of men that is the truth every one naira one dollar that will come into your account today is not falling from heaven is currently in the hand of a man my life changed when I found out that every man's destiny is as taunted and delayed as the arrival of the men sent from God to you when God wants to help you he accelerates the arrival of the men who have a role to play in your life. If Jesus never found um, John the Baptist, he would have remained there. For a long time, I thought that John the Baptist, the pregnancy of John the Baptist was just a delay on Rebecca until God showed me from the lens of scripture. If John was born way ahead of Jesus, he would have been discouraged and he would have left that wilderness. He had to only be six months older than Jesus so that he would match the arrival of Jesus. If that guy was born before that time, he would have waited in the wilderness maybe for 10 years and he would have said, you know what? This Jesus is not coming to. It is from that scripture I learned that all things work together. There are some things that God makes to happen at certain times so that it will coincide with prophecy and make for your lifting. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. John chapter 6 from verse 5. The ministry of men. 6 from verse 5. Give it to us media. Jesus lifted up his eyes. This is Jesus after one of his crusades. He saw a great company come to him and he said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread? In fact, give me NIV, please. NIV. Let's, let's work with NIV. So you understand what this scripture is saying. Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Reading verse 6. He asks this only to test them for he already knew how to convert those spiritual realities. You see that now? Jesus himself, he knew that those resources were available. But how we to now come and feed 5,000 people? 7. 
Philip answered, eight months wages will not buy enough bread to give each one a bite. 5,000 men aside women and children. Verse 8. Another of his disciples called Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Uh -huh. Here is a young boy. Say men. The miracle always happens when men show up. So that when you are praying, you will know how God answers prayer. He answers prayer by sending men. But you must know how to receive the men. Because there are some of you, like the believers that were praying for Peter, they were praying for Peter to arrive. When Peter arrived and he opened the door, they shut the door back and said he was his angel. You need to know how to receive the men God is sending to you. Here is a boy. Even though he's a boy, he's still a man. Some of you will reject him immediately and say he's just a boy. How about the slave girl who brought about the miracle of Naaman? When it has to do with the ministry of men, I'll be showing you a few things. You must sustain the discernment to look beyond the limitations of men. Sometimes the person that God will use to lift you will not be a CEO somewhere. He will be the cleaner in your house. He will say something. There is a miracle service somewhere. Oh, sir, can I ask for permission to miss Sunday? A miracle service where? A ministry called Koinonia said, ah, people have been telling me about that thing. Oh, that can be the spirit of God moving. And you come and sit down outside, fire falls from heaven. And captivity of 100 years, 80 years, 30 years, just like that. And the moment you get healed and you get delivered, the boy says, I just got admission to move to a school somewhere. God brought that boy there as a destiny helper for your deliverance. Are we together? Back to that scripture, please. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two fish. But how far will they go among so many? Don't downplay what God can do with men. Jesus said, have the people sit down. You see where we got the formula for sharing our palliatives? From this scripture. I was discussing with the people when we were having a meeting. And I said, let's go to scripture. How did they share bread in the Bible? The first thing is to tell the people to sit down. Because when people stand, they don't listen. So tell them to sit down. If you are not going to sit down, the bread will not come to you. This is where we found it. And there was plenty of grass in that place. And the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Verse 11. Jesus took the loaves from the man. Watch this. He gave thanks. The supernatural aspect was done by Jesus. But then he now distributed it using men again. It was Jesus that gave thanks. But those who shared it were not angels. They were men. And as they were going sharing it, it was multiplying supernaturally. When you read down to verse 13, the Bible says everyone ate and he said, gather the crumbs. And they gathered, it was 12 baskets full and he said, let nothing be wasted. Men can be used by God to take away waste from your life. It is men that are responsible for increase. But it is also men that are responsible for managing the increase so that there is no waste. When it had to do with getting the blessing, men came. Distributing the blessing, men were there. Managing the excesses of people when abundance comes is still men. The final arrival of spiritual realities is through the ministry of men. Watch this now. There are many dimensions of results and promises we seek. I listed a few here. Growth, financial increase, direction, healing, deliverance, get the teachings, jobs, promotions, marital settlement, fruitfulness, receiving the anointing, business expansion. I'll repeat it again for your sake. Growth, financial increase, Direction in life and destiny, healing, deliverance, jobs, promotions, marital settlements, fruitfulness of all sorts, receiving the anointing, expansion in business, intellectual growth. All of these resources are men dependent. 
There are realities that are finished in the realm of the spirit, but they all depend on the ministry of men. I took out time to study from Genesis to Revelation, the various manifestations of the supernatural to find out how many of them did not depend on men. And there were very few, very few in the Bible. For instance, the original creation, a man did not play a role because a man was not even there. You see that now. Jesus or God visiting Solomon, there was no man there directly as we know. So there are a few miracles that were directly, it was God to men, but men did not midwife it. But most manifestations depended on men. Let me list a few for you. The multiplication of men across the earth through Adam and Eve, you find that in Genesis 3.20. He needed two men for multiplication to happen. Adam called his wife's name Eve. The Bible called her the mother of all living. The mother of all living. Preservation of the earth through the ark and through Noah. It happened through the man Noah. Without Noah, that preservation agenda would not have happened. How about bringing deliverance to Israel from Egypt? It happened through the man Joseph. How about manna falling from heaven? It was at the instance of a prophet called Moses. God used Moses to bring the manna from heaven. But when the manna fell, it was men that picked it to eat it. The manna did not jump into their mouth. Men still played roles. In 2 Kings chapter 6, 5 to 7, when the axe head floated, it took a man as a prophet called Elijah. And the Bible says that when he prophesied and the axe head floated in verse 6, he told them, he said, now that I brought it up, he said, pick it up, verse 7. Therefore, he said, take it up. I have brought the miracle. The axe head is now floating. But it took a man to pick it up. If they left it, the miracle would not be complete. How about Samaria's supernatural deliverance from famine? It took the man, Elisha, by this time tomorrow. It took men, four lepers, that the Spirit of God moved upon them right and then it took men to pack those resources to Samaria to fulfill that prophetic word how about the deliverance of Nineveh it was through a man Jonah how about the birth of Jesus a woman Mary turning water to wine Jesus the man Mary the woman the disciples who were men who fetched the water, the, the water and turned it to wine? How about the raising of Lazarus? Men, the man Jesus, and the men that rolled away the stone, and the men that lose Lazarus to let him go. How about the feeding of the 5,000? We just read it. The young lad, Andrew, the disciples, Jesus. I'm showing you the ministry of men. How about the triumphant entry to Jerusalem? John, Luke chapter 19, 30 to 35. Just write it for reference. The triumphant entry. Go to a village and you will find a donkey that no man, not even the owners, had ridden upon. Lose it from a man as a man and bring it to a man called Jesus for his triumphant entry. When the owners asked in verse 33 and 34, said, the master has need of it. And he said, all right, fine, I give it to you. How about the burial of Jesus? The body of Jesus, like you have learned, was hanging on the cross. But redemption was not complete until a man had a role to play. Joseph of Arimathea used his influence as a man, used his virgin tomb as a wealthy man to bury Jesus for the burial and the resurrection to happen. How about announcing his resurrection? John 20, 16 and 17. Mary of Magdala, we call her Mary Magdalene. Hallelujah. When she heard it, John 20, 16 and 17. Mary, she turned herself and said, Rabboni, which is to say master, verse 17. Jesus said, do not touch me, for I am not ascended to my father. But you, as a human, man, woman, 
go to my brethren and announce my resurrection to them. It took a man to announce the resurrection of Jesus. It's still taking men today. Men, preachers, evangelists, missionaries, apostles, prophets to herald that resurrection.